Here at Heights Church, if you don't know anything about us, you just need to know that we're not okay surrendering the next generation. Uh, we're, we're doing everything that we can as a church family to invest, uh, to build up, to strengthen, uh, to, to fill with boldness and encourage uh, a group of young people. Come on, they're going to change the world for Jesus. I, I, yeah, that was a little, I know it's early, but that was an average clap that y'all get. Come on, can we give our students the most unbelievable? We love you guys. So great. We... <laughs> We love it. Come on, we always say it all the time. It's not kids, it's not just babysitting over there. It's not just watching kids. Come on, it's investing in it. It's in building them up and uh, come on, pointing them to Jesus. The thing that we say over here that we exist to lead people to experience the God who can change. Can I tell you, that's what that, that's what this exists over there. We exist for our children, our children's children, the next, come on, generation. Come on, to experience the God who can change your Life And even though it's a next-gen takeover, we believe that it can happen in your life today. If you're a first-time guest here, welcome to a church, come on, that is passionate uh, about fulfilling everything that God has called our church to be. And welcome home if you've never been here before. Uh, we love the fact that you're here. Uh, all of our online church family uh, watching from literally all over the place. You're like, this place is crazy. There's people just... We love you. We believe that God is with you. He's for you. He's going to meet you in a great, great way too. Come on, church, again, like you've never done it before. Say hello to the online church family. We love you guys. And uh, we, we, we are so passionate about uh, today. And if uh, you want to know why we believe everything that we do here matters, why well, this, this construction, massive construction, by the way, do you guys like our, our residential front door that they put in for us right in the front there? Uh, <laughs> be patient with us. I had a couple of people come and ask, I was like, is that where the wall is going to be forever? No, no, no. That's, that's temporary as they're continuing all of the exterior uh, demo, but we wanted to make it as safe as possible and as easy as possible for us to keep on having church. But I was just so reminded as the building keeps changing, as the property keeps taking shape and it keeps changing, Lord, thank you that the most important work that you're doing isn't with sticks and bricks or a remodel. Lord, thank you that the greatest work that you're doing is in our lives, in our people's lives. Lord, in what you're calling your church to be, who you're calling us to be. And we all get to be a part of that. And today, come on, today, I believe you're in for an unbelievable treat. And if you're not a student, uh, I just want to set the table uh, right here. Uh, I'm going to invite some students um, to come up and join me in, in just a few moments. And I want you to support them and cheer them on. Here's what I'm convinced. I'm convinced that it's never been more difficult to be a middle or a high school student and love and serve the Lord than ever before in history. Um, and this house, um, like I've already said, is committed to not just creating a safe place for them to live out their faith, but fill them with courage and boldness so that when they leave this house, that boldness and that courage follows them along. And so I want you to celebrate them. I want you, listen, to open up your heart. Even if you're like, Josh, I was in middle school back in the 70s. This generation got nothing on the 60s movement, you know, on the Jesus revolution that I grew up in, you know, all that stuff. Listen, I believe that their story, they have power, just like your story has power. I believe that God is going to even speak to many of you adults, many people watching online, listen through the voice of our young people. That's why the Bible says, don't let anyone despise you because in your youth, but be an example, be a leader. Our young people are leaders. So like you've never done it before, I'm gonna invite to the stage right now, Lena, Adelaide, and Ben Muntz. Come on, where you guys at? Help me welcome our students to the stage. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're in. Go ahead, take y'all seats. Let's go, guys, turn on your mics. I, am I, just am, okay. Slide, just slide it on, just <laughs> Is slide it on? on up. On? And, uh, Ben, you all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you guys uh, so much. And I, I want to get this, this right because I'm, I'm so excited about here. We have uh, Lena Hunt, you are in 10th grade. Correct. What school do you go to? Uh, Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. Uh, <laughs> no love for Patrick Henry. Anybody go to Patrick Henry? You heard of it? <laughs> Um, Adelaide Johnson, you are in eighth grade. Where do you go to school? Uh, Quiocasin. 
Koyakuson, let's go. Um, and then Ben Mullins, you are in seventh grade, and I've known you your whole entire life. Uh, literally. Literally your whole entire life. And what school do you go to? I go to Grove Christian School. Grove Christian School. Let, let's go. So, guys, first of all, let me just, uh, I want to, because I know this can be a lot, but the team we were talking before, and I'm going to open up the same way that I started. I don't know, and I know your church family agrees uh, with you and with me in this, is that we are so unbelievably proud um, of each of you um, for even taking this step. Uh, a lot of people would never even get in front of a bunch of adults and open up or share their story. And so the fact that you guys are here and willing to do this is we're just so thankful yeah. and we're so proud of each and every one of you. But let me I, I want to see if I could get you guys help uh, painting a picture because I was even thinking about this. I don't know about I, I went to high school in the 90s. <laughs> I got any love for the 90s. Okay, so I went into high school as a freshman in 95, 94, 95. Um, so much is different, so much has changed. Uh, would you guys, and this is, I, I'm starting this way because we've had uh, prepared questions and this is not one of your prepared questions. Nope. So not to raise your anxiety level, but I wanted to get a raw, real <laughs> answer. Give me, and, and Lena, we'll start with you, uh, since you're in 10th grade. What is it like, and you guys can all think, but I was just, help us understand, what is it like uh, being a student, a middle or high school student today in this culture, in this generation uh, that doesn't have hardly any godly values, um, going to a public school, private school, it doesn't matter, trying to live for God in a culture that does not value God. Um, what's, what's been that journey like for you? What is that like? I would say going to like, especially as a high schooler, it's very tiring. You're constantly having to make sure education comes first. Um, you wanna make sure you're getting your good grades and it can be a lot of pressure, especially with everyone around you always kind of watching you, or at least that's how I feel. I always feel like I have a pressure to make sure I'm you know, succeeding in my career and everything I wanna accomplish. But I also have to manage like my social life. And that's a really hard thing to do as a teenager because you have so many people around you not following God and not really, you're not really having godly relationships or godly people around you. And so it's sometimes discouraging because you just see people, you know, not doing the best thing. And it's, it can be a lot of pressure because sometimes you want to fit in. Yeah. And it's not always the easiest to do the right thing. But there's times where you just have to take a step back and be like, what is the right thing for me? So it's, it's, it's definitely hard. But... Adelaide, what about you? Um, so at my middle school, we're not very like zoned well. So there's a lot of different like cultures. Turn up her mic, son. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of different cultures in like my school. So like so many people aren't like living um by God and don't have like a relationship with God. So they're always um cussing and they're in the bathroom skipping. So it's hard because part of me always wants to fit in. I'm a very I'm a person that doesn't like to stand out. So part of me wants to fit in, but I had to keep in the back of my head that I live by God, so I can't sin. I can't do the things that they do, so it's hard. So great. Ben, what's it like? You go to, and you have a unique perspective because you go to yeah. a Christian school, but part of your story is just because you go to a Christian school doesn't mean everyone's yeah. Christian. Um, I've, yeah. <laughs> I've gone to public school all my life, and when I was getting in trouble all the time, um, when I went to private school, I thought I was, it was going to be completely different, and it kind of was, but it really didn't change a lot. Like, everyone still goes there and says that, like she said, they have a relationship with God, but you don't see it at all, and um, they just, like, you're trying to fit in, but you want to, like, you kind of want to live like how you know you're supposed to by God, but you just feel like so insecure about yourself. So good. Isn't it amazing that the th same things that students struggle with, did you notice all three fit in? Yeah. Pressure, that people are doing this, but I know that I'm called to, yeah. and that's exactly what it, 
is still the same today. I don't care if you're 50, I don't care if you're 80, I don't care if you're 35, 40. The pull to compromise so that you can fit in, but also towing the line that you know that God's not called you to fit in, he's called you to stand out. And so you guys, what an unbelievable ability to just recognize that um, at this age and fight that. So here's what I also love about uh, not just these students, but all of our students, is that you got, your lives have been transformed uh, you guys are serving the Lord. You're coming, but you're not just even coming to church. Like you're serving, yeah. actively serving yeah. in God's house. You guys are a part of the uh, dream team, um, and you guys are doing so many amazing, amazing things. Um, and you're in, you're in, you're in HCS on Sunday nights, uh, which is our heights. What is it? What H? <laughs> I thought it was Heights Church students, but then I was like, they could have come up with a, a name that I don't know, and I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow, that tells you where, so I, yeah, HCS, and uh, you, again, you guys are involved in everything, and I don't know, uh, Lena and Adelaide, you guys serve in our Heights Kids every single Sunday. Ben, you're in uh, uh, production, doing some amazing things. Uh, Lena, let's, let's start with you. What do you enjoy most about serving, being a part of the team over there uh, in, in Heights Kids? So I, whoa, I serve with, um, you know, like I think second graders to fifth graders, so energy is high even at 8.30 in the morning, and um, <laughs> it's a lot, but I'm an, I'm an outgoing person. I'm very social. I'm constantly walking around here just being like, good morning, good morning, good morning. Like, it, I'm always talking. Sorry, but I'm always talking and I'm always trying to get to know people. So being able to serve in there, I'm able to connect with these kids and like show them, even though, yeah, I'm older than you, I'm here to help you through your journey and show you that like, just because you're younger doesn't mean you're limited to what you can do through God, you know? And I really, I really just want, these kids who are getting ready to go into middle school and feel that pressure, I just want them to know that they have that backboard, not only me, but God. You know, I just want them to feel so supported. That's great. This girl's trying to preach. <laughs> Adelaide, what about you serve, I know, in downtown, uh, which is our, and goodness gracious, you have a special anointing on you for being in that room all the time. Um, what is serving there in those rooms in Heights Kids taught you? What are you learning? Oh, so I've served in room two, so so many young kids and they'll have so many different personalities but <laughs> she's talking about y'all's kids right now <laughs> yep so, <laughs> so like lena i still have to be energized in the morning because i have to be able to get to all of them when one's crying one wants food one wants who knows what <laughs> <laughs> so i'm always um just like ready to be there and it's taught me a lot of things about like how I can handle children I don't know how to explain it but <laughs> it's given me like a view of how I can help people and how even though I'm young I can and though young I can still pray for them I can still pray for their families and what they're going through so, so it's right. it's very yeah. wow it's amazing Ben again known you since you were four years old when your family moved here uh, to come help us plant this church. You've been, you had had no choice. <laughs> yeah. No choices. But you've been here since four, now you're serving on production and all these things. Come on, what, what do you love? What are you learning? What do you see? Um, I have been serving on production for a little bit now, but I've recently started serving on Dream Team Kids. And it's really, it's really fun because I was kind of like, when I was serving in production, I was kind of like not being, like not able to like be loud. I'd like sneak around and do everything. <laughs> you guys can't see me. <laughs> Take off your mask, adults. This is what the kids are teaching us. Just say what's really going on. Um, That's great. But now that I get to serve in Dream Team Kids, I kind of get to express my middle school boy, so. Um, I like, yeah, I get to, uh, Dream Team Kids is really fun because there's like, they're just, it's game time the whole time because it's, they're just waiting for church to be over at that point. Um, so 
you get to you like get really tired but kids they don't like they don't get tired they're just they keep going no they don't so they don't get tired you have to like keep coming up with new games over and over and then I kind of like I kind of think that they're gonna like forget a game from last week and I like you want to play this and they're like we played that last week give us something new they say the same thing about me every single Sunday too so. it doesn't change yeah. Um, but I just really like not like just coming to church, but I like just getting to make it happen. So. Yeah. That's great. So you guys are all serving. You're engaged. You're in, oftentimes put in what seems to be probably impossible situations uh, during the week with friends that aren't following the Lord in a culture that doesn't follow the Lord. And it's easy i think sometimes to simplify you guys' journey or say well they're just young kids young kids just they just bounce back from everything you know they'll just, they'll just be able to make it they're, they're going to get it someday uh and where you are now hasn't been how it's always been um and that god has done some miraculous um amazing uh miracles in each one of you guys' life um even though life hasn't always played nice um, even in high, middle, middle and high school. So as I was thinking about uh, you guys' story, and again, we're so thankful that you guys are being so bold and courageous yeah. to even share a, a portion of you guys' story, but it, always, it hasn't always been easy. There's been some very uh, difficult things. Um, and Ben, I'm going to start with you this time, um, and we're going to wor we'll work our way back uh, this way. But talk to us a little bit um, and very briefly about, uh, we call these highs and lows, a high time and a low time. We'll, we'll start with the lows so we end on a positive, but talk to me, talk to us about a low point uh, in your life. Yeah, um, my, probably my lowest point in my life was the, my entire sixth grade year. Uh, I went to Middle Ocean Middle School and I was a completely different person than I was at church on Sunday and I was at my home. Um, and because of that, I was really lonely and angry with myself all the time. And I kind of kept myself like isolated from everything. And I missed out on a lot of things. Um, but I started coming to HCS and I got surrounded by people who believe in me and love me and it boosted my confidence a lot. So great. It's amazing. Love you both. Adelaide, what about you? Again, it hasn't always been easy. There's been some, some, some very difficult times. Talk, talk to us about one of your lowest points and how you kind of came out. So one of my lowest points was summer of 2021. It was a very interesting summer, but I was very isolated and I didn't go out of my room. And if I did, it was to get food. But um, when I did get out, and like when I'll go on vacation, I was constantly thinking of ways to try to die and try to kill myself. And it was, it was very, I don't know if it was that. It was very weird to like do this because every day I was trying to find a way to kill myself, try to find a way to die because I didn't want to be alive anymore because I didn't think my parents loved me and I didn't think um, I even had a purpose for this world anymore. So at one point I just decided to finally do it and I ended up in the hospital with um, for like a week just trying to find a mental hospital to go to because it was so bad and it got so so, so, so bad. Yeah, so bad to yeah. um, finally, to, to get to the finally of the point that I need um, inpatient help because of how bad my attempt was and how it could have seriously um, ended my life or caused damage to my body. So. Mm. And I was, we were talking, um, Mm. God has such a special plan for your life. Yeah. 
It really does. And you are so loved. And you are so amazing. And God's anointing and his call and his hand. You're alive for a reason. And we are better because of it. We love you. Very, very much. Yeah, I know. I know, me too. I'm not crying. Uh, <laughs> what? Is, crying. No. Um, I, I would say, <laughs> okay, I would say probably the lowest point for me was um, it really just sixth grade through ninth grade. Um, I was so severely depressed. Um, I would constantly want to stay home. I wouldn't want to go anywhere. Um, if I was at school, I wouldn't talk to people. Um, I just, I didn't want to be surrounded by people because I felt like I was just like a waste of space. I didn't, I didn't need to be in an area where I know I'm not going to be, you know, resourceful. I'm not going to have a purpose there. So like when I'm at school, I'm just, I'm really there to just get my homework done and get out. I didn't really feel like I had a purpose to have friends because I was meant to walk through life alone. I was meant to get through this alone. I didn't really have, um someone to care for me. And I would say probably sixth and seventh grade, um, I was so severely depressed that I was um, self-harming and I was cutting myself. And um, that was really hard for me because I felt like I had to do that because if I cut myself, I could make myself feel smaller and I could cut away the pain, I could cut away the bad parts of me. And it was just, um, it was really bad. I just. It was an everyday thing. I'd come home from school and I would cut and then um, go to school like nothing happened because I just didn't want people to know how I was feeling. Mm. Isn't it amazing, church? Uh, and the reason why we, we open up like this and we talk about things that aren't always the funnest to talk about is because there's even people that are in this room right now, there's people that are watching online yeah. and you're still struggling. Maybe you're here and you're a parent and your kid's struggling. Or maybe you're a grandparent or maybe you're an adult and you're never able to find that hope and that freedom uh, as a young person. And so it's still with you today. Um, I'm going to tell you something. The reason why days like this are so important is because it's the same old devil with the same old tricks. And all throughout history, especially in God's word, he's been after our children. He's been after the next generation. He was with the Israelites, killing all the Hebrews. He did it again in the New Testament with hair. He's always, always, always after the lives of our young people. Uh, and again, I just, uh, we're gonna have one more question and we're gonna, we're gonna go, but I just, in the name of Jesus, you need to receive this, speak life and blessing and favor and God's purpose and God's plan. And the reason why days like this are so important is because uh, spiritually we break off the strongholds yeah. and the traps that the enemy has set for our young people in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Very quick, we've got time for one more question. Uh, and uh, Lena, we'll start with you. That, let's, go to, let's go to highs. There's been some super, super big lows. Talk to me about a high, not just... But what are you most excited about in the future? I mean, you're in 10th grade. It feels like, man, if I could go back to 10th grade. I mean, you're, <laughs> like your entire lives are still in front of you guys. And you're also living knowing that every decision that you make as a young person matters. You care. It's setting the stage for your future. So what are you most excited about as you've made these changes? Uh, and we're going to hear a little bit more about all three of your stories in depth here in just a second. But what are you most excited about in the future, about what God has for you? I'm most excited to uh, go to college and get my degree. I know that's a little bit far away, but I want to become a teacher. I want to teach kids. Let's go. I really, I really want to teach high schoolers um, because I feel like high school is such a hard time. And not a lot of people understand it because it's like the older generation is like, eh. Uh, you're fine. Go to school. You know, back in my day, I had to walk to school. I didn't have a button. But, <laughs> but, there it is. but I just, the truth. <laughs> I really want to teach kids. I just want to, like, be that backboard. Be like, you don't only need an education to get through life. You need people. 
Life is not so meant good. to live alone. You're meant to have people. So I, I really, I'm excited to become a teacher one day. Let's go. Well, we want to have a school one day, so. Hire me. Hire me. <laughs> See that? That was your interview. You're hired. Good. Done. Adelaide, what about, what about you? Come on, what are you most excited about in the future about what you think God has for you? I am most excited about getting, like, to have my first, like, professional full-time job, which sounds really crazy since I know it brings a lot of stress, and I'm, I'm not good with stress, but, <laughs> but I really want to be um, an anesthesiologist. Come on. So I'm really excited for that, even though it takes a ton of school. It's just really exciting to get to work with people and work um, and get to play with them and like be able to play over them and things. So really so excited great. for that. That's awesome. Come on. All right, Ben. What are you most excited about? Um, I'm most excited to just get school over with. <laughs> I mean, you really value education, and <laughs> it's really setting you up for the future, they, you know. Yeah. Um, none of that really matters, but I'm... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying not even to go to college. I'm just going to probably join the military, so... Come on! All right. Hey, again, I, I'm, I'm, I want to close our time, guys, by saying what you've done today um, takes tremendous courage. Uh, what you've done this week and even sharing your stories, which we're about to close our time, was taking a look at uh, the boldness and the courage and the anointing that God has on your life. Uh, all that you need to know is that you guys, students like you, give hope that the next generation will serve the Lord. We'll have a priority on God's house. We'll reach more students for Jesus. We love you. We are so proud of you. And this church is fully, fully behind each and every one of you. Come on, High Church, please give it up for Leah, Adelaide, and Ben Mullins. We love you guys. Amazing. Hey, quickly, grab your seats. Um, you know, these... We wanted to end our time uh, together. It's, it's amazing hearing interviews um, and hearing their kind of raw, un, uncut answers. Uh, but how many know that the stories that you have, or let me say your life's story has power only if you share it. If God's given you a story and it's never shared, then it doesn't help anybody. It's just the pain and the wound that you keep carrying. And that's why we love that these students not only got up here and told a little bit about their story, uh, but we put it in a, a little bit of a video form to show you a better, a better picture because they wanted to encourage not just themselves, but encourage our whole entire church family that what we do, parents, matters. How you raise your children matters. Whether or not you get them in God's house, it matters. It matters. And even though it's been amazing and God's doing so many amazing new things in their life, the journey hasn't always been easy. But how I many know God has always been faithful? Uh, and, and we want you to check out these stories and take a look. My name is Adelaide Johnson. If I never found high students, I probably wouldn't be here anymore. My name is Ben Mullins. And if I never found Height students, I think I'd be really lonely. My name is Lena Hunt. If I never found Height students, I don't think I would be here today. Before I started coming to Heights students, um, my life was very isolated and very depressing. At the time, my, my mom was married to um, my former stepdad, and he was very toxic and he would just say things that would hurt me. And that led to me feeling like I was worthless and I never had a place in that house. I had kind of grown up in church my entire life. I had never like, it wasn't like I was 
like really lost at one point and church came into my life midway and saved me. It was kind of like church was never an option. I had always just gone to church and I had always known that like God was the right thing, but I never really like, I didn't really understand it deeply. Before I started coming to Heights Students, I was in a really bad place mentally. Um, I was extremely depressed. Um, I felt alone all the time. I felt like I didn't really have anyone. Um, I was kind of always in my room. I shut myself off from everyone. You know, I used to be really outgoing and social, and then it just, over time, I just became extremely depressed, and um, I just kind of shut down. What led up to me going to the mental hospital was being um, isolated and the idea that no one understood my emotions. So I didn't want to be alive anymore. So I tried to um, commit suicide twice in the span of one and a half months. Even after I had made the decision to accept Christ, into my life, I struggled with a lot of uh, insecurity and like I was hanging out around the wrong people at school. They were doing like all these really bad things that I picked up. It was a really bad habit um, and was a really bad decision that I made that I knew I shouldn't have been doing, but I did anyways. My view on God was that I didn't think he was real. The idea is that, the idea that I had of God was that he was a God that brought happiness and joy. And I just thought, well, God hasn't given me happiness and joy. I'm just going through a ton of things. So why would he be real? He wouldn't give an 11 year old this. I always just felt sick to my stomach because I was keeping so many things away from everyone that I felt like no one actually knew the real me at that point. Like I was just a complete fake person. And like I was pretending at school, but I feel like I had to be the same as everyone there. And that caused a lot of conflict in my life because that what everyone else was doing was definitely not the right thing to be doing. During my sixth and seventh grade year of middle school, um, I was extremely depressed. I wanted to find ways to cope that weren't healthy, um, and I started to self-harm and cut myself. Um, and I really did that because I felt like if I did that, it would make me it would make me feel better. It would make me feel like, you know, I wasn't taking up as much space if I was cutting everything away. When I left the hospital, my dad, um, a f like a week after, was like, there's this bone that I feel like God has been calling me to, to bring you to. And at the time, I still didn't have a relationship with God or even believed he was real. In the bone, a family friend named Judge Lowe um, pulled me aside and was talking about how he knew like, what I was going through and that his wife went through the same thing and he showed me a letter that he never showed anyone before and it was of his wife writing a letter about what she went through and it was very similar to what I went through. The letter was um, very, was very moving and changing and a very important part of where I am today. I came home from school, it was pretty late into the school year and the principal had called my mom, which was a regular daily basis. And my mom was just so upset. She was crying and she was just, she was like, I'm done with every single day. We get a call from the principal and it's every single day. It's the same thing or it's another thing, adding on to a list of a thousand different things that you've done. And I just felt like she said that she knows this is not me and she just didn't know what to do and she was so upset and I could see it and it made me so like angry and upset but sad with myself and I really realized what I'd done with my life and I just, I cr pr cried out to the Lord and I prayed and asked him to help me through this and I just 
and had no idea what to do, and he did, he helped me. I have a best friend named Zoe, and um, there was a night we were having a sleepover, and I remember we were just kind of doing each other's makeup, watching movies, listening to music, and hanging out. And um, I'd always told Zoe everything, but there was things I kept from her. And I remember this one night, she was doing my makeup and I just started bawling my eyes out. And she was like, did I hurt you? Are you okay? Like, what's going on? And um, I remember I just kind of, I told her everything. I told her about how I was self-harming and how I was cutting myself and how I would wake up and wish I didn't. Um, and she confided in me and really told me like, I understand where you're coming from. Like, I've been through that. I'm going through that. And we kind of talked about it. And I remember her mom came in and was like, why are you crying? Are you okay? Like, did, did something happen? And um, I remember just bawling. And I, I told her mom everything as well. And I was just, I felt a big pressure lifted off of my shoulders. Um, and I remember we all kind of were just sitting on the floor hugging each other as I'm crying and we're all starting to cry. And her mom just kind of started praying over me. And I think that was kind of the first, the first time I realized like, I'm not broken. I'm not too far gone to be saved. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not finished. I still have a reason to do, to do things, to be here. Um, and I mean, that night is really the whole reason I started believing. When I came to Heights, just everyone made me feel at home and allowed me to be myself there. High Students has helped me by kind of just giving people around me to be able to share my things, uh, everything that's been going on. It felt so good to just get everything out and finally tell someone, especially my parents, what, I, what had been going on in my life that I had been keeping from them for so long. And they were just really like open to help me and to get me through what I've been going on, what I've been going on. Um, and I kind of just really focused on like getting better. Like I didn't want to be in this hole anymore. I actually wanted to live and feel happy. Um, and I didn't want to like wake up every morning wishing that I didn't and wishing that I could just go back to bed and not wake up. And I really started focusing on myself. And then I remember I found heights and I started going and it really, it, it changed everything. Everyone was just so energetic and so ready to give God all that they have. And it's just so nice to, and it was so nice to be somewhere where people aren't judging other people and they're there for you and they're fun and they're inviting. Since I've been coming to Height Students, I feel like I've experienced God's presence because people will get up and share things that I'm like, oh wow, I really needed to hear that. That relates to me a lot, and I feel like if that person can get through that, then so can I. You go into a small group and it's like you have all of these different teenagers around you who have been through what you've been through, and they understand, and it's kind of just a time for all of us to reflect on everything going on, and we kind of just, we get to be in, a, in an area where we all can talk about God and our struggles and how sometimes we don't feel very close to Him, but we know that He's there. I think that was really what um, broke me out of my shell and brought me to like wanting to participate, wanting to get up and dance around and, you know, participate in the games and go to one nights. And I think that's, that's really what started making me want to go more. The biggest areas of my life that are different now are the confidence that I have to be myself and to be outgoing and open. And so, and having so many friends in that I have people to talk to about what I'm going through and I don't have to feel ashamed about it. I feel a lot more happy now with my life and just myself and I feel less pressured and feel less anxious about everything and I feel just I feel like me. I think it's just seeing other people's life change in front of my eyes. Like seeing how so many people in the church are, you know, achieving so many different things and getting to new points in their life. It's just like, if God can do it for them, God can do it for me. And it's like, go to, go to students, go to church, sign up for serving, do whatever you can just to be surrounded more by God and around God's people. 
And it, it's definitely, it's changed my life from, you know, always being surrounded by broken to now wanting to be surrounded by the people who I know love and care about me. I hope that other people will take away from this that God will pick you up from where you are and, and show you other things that he has in store for you, even if you're in your darkest moment, that there's always somewhere that you can be and somewhere that God will be with you. I really hope that everyone watching this will take away the fact that you really, really, really just need to open up to somebody because it feels so good for all the weight that's been, that you've been carrying on you of things that you've been hiding that you don't think people will accept you if you tell them what's been going on. It feels so good to just tell somebody and be like, this is what I'm struggling through and they're gonna help you through it. For anyone watching, I hope the one thing that you can take away from my testimony is that you're not too broken to be saved. You're not too far gone to be loved and healed. And you have a purpose for being here. You have a purpose to change your life and change other people's lives. You're not too far gone. And you're loved not even just by others around you, but by someone who created you perfectly. Come on, give Jesus some better praise than that, everybody. Mm. As I was watching that, that's about the 500th time I've watched it. But every single time that I watch it, I'm just reminded, and we're gonna, I'm going to pray for you. That no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your age is, the truth is God has a plan for your life. And God loves you, listen, just how you are. But he also loves you too much to let you stay where you are. He's the God of more. And you ready for this? No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're feeling, if you're lonely, if you're isolated, if you're hiding, his desire is to reveal more of himself to you. Listen, you have a step to take. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, one of our favorite verses, we say it all the time. It says, you will seek me and you will find me when. When what, Josh? When you seek me with all of your heart. There's a promise in that verse actually ends by saying, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Every single person right now online, just be very, very still.